Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Inner Healer. I'm Shakri, and today we're going to be talking about seven reasons you might be fighting with your spouse. Now, there's an array of different reasons why you may be fighting with your spouse, but I narrowed it down to only seven. Seven is probably like the, the number for this channel because seven is inner healing. And then what is this channel called? It's called inner healer. So I just feel like seven is the number for this channel. So a lot of things is going to have seven reasons, seven signs, seven ways, seven things. It's going to be a lot of sevens going on around here. And then the fact that this year is a universal year seven. So everybody should be healing, healing ourselves and Heal, a part of healing ourselves is figuring out ways that we may be toxic in our relationship with ourself because yourself is your first relationship. So if you're doing toxic things with yourself and then you see it happening with within your relationship with another person, it's like, hey, this person is being a mirror to me, the mirror effect in relationships. So we have to figure out how to heal ourselves so that we can go on to have healthy relationships. So let's get into may, the reasons that you may be fighting with your spouse. Now, reason number one, the number one reason why marriages break up anyway, why marriages end in divorce, the number one reason it's finances. Couples are fighting about finances. We are marrying people that are not equally yoked with us when it comes to finances. This is a question that you should have before you even proceed within a relationship with someone, but especially in a marriage, what is your financial IQ? How do you handle your finances? Are you on time with your finances, with bills, with anything? How do you handle your money? What do you do with your money? If you were to have spare money, what would you do with it? That's a really good question to have for a future spouse, someone that you're pursuing, someone that you feel like you want to spend the rest of your life with. You need to know, what would they do with some extra money? Would they invest it? Would they go buy clothes? Would they take you on a trip? Would they furnish the house? What would they do with that money? So finances is a really, really big reason why couples fight. Family is business for us. We have to have regular meetings. We have to put the minutes down for the meeting for communication, to meet relationship regulations, for communication. So sit and have meetings, whether you're having weekly meetings, whether you're having monthly meetings, but you have to sit down and prioritize this because we need to know where is the money going? Are we allotting money for this, 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 this? Is money being allotted for everything that it needs to be allotted for and everything that we want it to be allotted for? So sit and having regular family meetings and everyone being involved. If you have children, the children being involved too. Why? Because the children are finding out your financial IQ. You're teaching your children about finances when you sit and you can have a healthy conversation. It should not end in shouting. Because that's what happens a lot of times when you talk about finances. People don't like to talk about that. But it's something that, especially as a married couple, we have to sit down and we have to know how much money we have to do everything that we want and have to do within this business. So also we have to come up with a plan. So everything should be written down so that it's written in plain sight is written plain, everything straight to the point. How are we going to manage the finances? What happens if someone messes up the finances? Everything should be written down so that is it is in contract form so that it can be referenced back to if anything was to go left. And even when it's going right, it's something to reference back to so that we can know we're still on the right track. And if things start going left, then we know what we need to do to get back over into the right lane, you know? So finances is a big reason why couples fight. Get that in order. Number two, 
communication is out of whack. You guys haven't learned each other's communication styles. One person may communicate at nighttime. Another person may want to communicate when they first wake up in the morning. You have to know how they communicate. When is the best time to communicate with them? Learn whatever it is about their communication style that you have to learn about them so that you can better accommodate the relationship when it comes to the communication style. I am a big astrology geek. So when I think of communication, I think that you should have, you should really, really have to find out what their mercury is, what sign is their mercury in. And if you know the, the, uh, the time of their birth, what house is their mercury in? But we have to talk. We have to have communication, open and honest communication. We're speaking about any and everything that's on our mind that we want to voice to our partners. So we can know how to better accommodate them within that conversation. And what do I mean by that? It can lead into a shouting match if our communication skills or if our communication styles are out of whack. One person might just go on and do things and never even consult with the spouse and that causes a rift between them. One person can want the spouse to know every single thing and they have to call them for every single thing. And that might be, that might not work for your spouse. You have to know what works for you guys within your relationship so that you can know how to better accommodate each other. Number three, intimacy. Your intimacy styles are different. So you guys are arguing about that. One partner may be more affectionate than the other partner. So if one partner is more affectionate, then they're, they're, they're not understanding why you're not as affectionate as them. And then that can become an argument. Now, when we talk about intimacy, we have to talk about the sex aspect of it. No, because this can fall right into that category. So we're going to put cheating in there. Arguments pursued because of cheating, because of intimacy. But how did the intimacy issues start? Were you willing to compromise? Were you too tired? Did you communicate with that, with the, with your partner about that? If you communicated that you are too tired and you guys have an open dialogue, but you can't be too tired every night. Now you'd have been too tired every night for two weeks, three weeks, a whole month. Like now that, that of course it's going to be an argument because you want to feel, you want to touch, you want to, you, you know, what the things that lovers do. So intimacy is a really big reason why couples argue too. When it comes to any issues that you have within your relationship, there's compromise. We are continuously compromising so that we so that it can be a better atmosphere, but we're not compromising at the detriment of our to ourselves. We are going to compromise within reason that we're not tearing ourselves down in the process. But that also goes back to communication. We always have to communicate. We always have to. How is one person supposed to know what's going on with the other person if you didn't let the person know that something was even the matter? That things are good, things are bad, things... You don't know unless you communicate it. Communication is key in any relationship. Number four, trust issues. You know, this go this develops over time. It develops over time of being let down, having expectations outside of yourself. So now you were expecting someone to do something and they didn't do it and they let you down or they said that they were going to do it and it, it didn't happen. So now you're, you're, you're starting to not have trust into them. You're starting to not have faith in them. But communication is key. We're always going to go back to communication because everything is all about communication. Now, now when I say communication, a communication style that is not belittling, that is not 
high, high pitched voice. Like we are having a calm and cool conversation. And anytime we feel like our voices are being elevated, we are going to take a time out and then resume back when the emotions are not as high, when the room, the air in the room is not as tense. Do mishaps happen and do arguments like just start to happen? Absolutely. But are we intentionally going to continue on with the argument when we are privy to what's going on? When we are knowing what's going on in the atmosphere, are we going to continue to indulge in that? We are working on ourselves. We are trying to heal. And then when we talk about trust issues, back when we were talking about cheating, if your, if your spouse cheated before, obviously you're going to have trust issues because that, that trust was broken. It was broken when you decided to cheat on yourself because cheating on your partner is cheating on yourself. Big Sean said it the best. Cheating on you was like cheating on myself. Why? Because you guys have become one. So now there, there's tensions in the air. There's soul swapping going on. There's soul ties going on. Their emotions are high. The, the feelings are hurt. All of these things are happening. And then there's trust issues. I don't believe you when you say you're going to this place. You're going to your homie house because you, you might be going to her house. I don't believe you when you said you took your mom to the store. You know, things like that. But then there's also accountability. Take accountability. We are not taking accountability when we're getting into these arguments. What part did we play into this argument? So we just have to take into account each other's feelings. If you feel like someone is doing something to you that is untrustworthy, you communicate that to them so that y'all can sit down and have that conversation so that the, the line of communication is open and then you can state what you're having your trust issues about. And then you guys can come to a common ground. Number five, time. You're not spending any time. You're spending too much time. Arguments happen when you're spending too much time. You're not giving each other any space. So you're always up under each other. So you're seeing every little thing that irks you about this person. Then you just start, you, you just go off. On the flip side, you're not spending enough time. Back in, we're, we're going to talk about begging. We don't beg. That's peasant behavior. We're not begging to spend time with anyone. Because the best relationship is the relationship within ourselves. And we can spend time with ourselves. But if you're not getting enough time, then obviously that's going to be an argument because if you say that you want to spend time and it doesn't happen, remember communication. We're going to communicate that, but we're not going to talk about it anymore. I said what I said. I want to spend time. Are you going to give me that time that I asked for? I'm not begging, but time is another one. You're not spending enough time with their spouse, so you're not even getting to know them. So you don't know their communication styles. You don't know their their the, the way that they do anything because you're not getting that time that you need with them. So spending time in a relationship is key. And not having enough time spent with you will cause an argument with, with you and your spouse. So make time for your spouse. Make time to get to know them because we're constantly evolving. We have to keep on introducing the new version of us to our spouses also. As we're introducing that new version of us to ourselves, we have to break that ground and introduce that new person to our spouses also. So we're continuously introducing new people. Why? Because we're continuously elevating in life. So spend time to avoid those arguments. No, the last one, too much masculinity within both of y'all. Everybody always wants to be right. Everybody always has to have the last word. So these things are causing arguments. You always want to be right. You always want to have the last word. You just be pretty, sit and be pretty. That's it. Sit and be pretty. He's wearing the pants, especially if you have a man that is wearing the pants, a man that is doing what he's supposed to be doing, a man that is providing and protecting and loving you. 
And in turn, you're respecting him. You're giving him the utmost respect. You are the definition of the divine feminine. Kick your feet up and just be pretty. Now, that was seven reasons that you could potentially be arguing with your spouse. If you like what you heard in this video, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Peace.